Um, my name is Venka Virapan. I'm a movement disorders neurologist by training, and my specialty focus is primarily on Parkinson's disease and tremor syndromes. So Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease that primarily affects the dopaminergic neurons in the brain, which cause a variety of different symptoms, which often include tremor, changes in posture, rigidity, or what we think of as muscle stiffness, um, slowness of movement, and also walking and balance issues. Um, I think early recognition is very important, as well as early diagnosis, as well as implementation of treatment, because um, that can improve quality of life dramatically and provide improved quality of life for a much longer sustained period of time. Is Parkinson's disease the same for everyone? And I would say it's very, very different for each individual person, as one might experience certain symptoms that another patient who maybe is the same age and same gender will not experience those same symptoms. So it's very unique. So the treatment plan has to be really personalized for that individual patient. So the mainstays of treatment for Parkinson's disease revolve around replacing dopamine. So that often means oral medications. And there's different classes of medications that modulate dopamine or replace dopamine. But that is primarily from a symptomatic standpoint. And there's a significant role as well for exercise and physical therapy and that playing a role in per And there's a lot of research that suggested that it may slow down Parkinson's and certainly improve quality of life long term. The thing that I tell all of my patients is exercise, exercise, exercise. I mean, that has, to me, shown the, from just personal interaction with patients, the most benefit long term. Um, so I think that's very, very important. The, the other additional thing that I'd like to add from the exercise aspect of it is there's a lot of research to back up what we say in clinic. Um, the biggest study was the Parkinson's Outcomes Project um, that looked back on the importance of exercise and it definitely suggests at least the, the outcome of that study was two and a half hours per week of exercise. And that could be any combination of exercise, whether it's aerobic or strength training or mobility, agility. Um, balance, um, but so that's the kind of framework we use. So oftentimes I tell people, you know, 20 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day, you know, more days of the week than not to kind of add up to that is, is very beneficial um, long term. So, and everyone's exercise regimen is going to be different. Um, and a lot of that just depends on what you're physically going to be able to do. You know, even if you're able to exercise at home, whether it's just walking um, or if you're one, one of our more um, avid exercises who likes enjoying, you know, who enjoys running on a treadmill or, um, you know, those sort of, or swimming or whatnot. You know, whatever you can do to stay active is what I would recommend. Uh, my name is Carrie Kasky and I'm an occupational therapist. So our class is tailored for anyone with Parkinson's at any level of Parkinson's. We have people that come in in wheelchairs and some people that come in walking and it's really hard to tell that they may have Parkinson's. A lot of our classes are done from a chair level. So for people that need to sit, they can sit. For people that stand, we can make things more challenging. And it's really tailored for um, all Parkinson's patients and just to keep moving. Some people come in with fears of not being able to do certain things, whether it's because of balance or, or pains associated with other medical diagnoses and it's really nice that we can just modify as needed for for everyone that comes in the door it's been so neat to see the program grow from what it was so many years ago to what it is today it's so neat to see each month uh, progress that all the patients are making along with making physical progress it's really neat to see the social progress that people are making we have a little family here and we all make friends and all the members that come to class are, are getting close and we have that social interaction aspect that Parkinson's patients really need. My name is Gavin Lunsford and I teach the Parkinson's cycle class here at the Anderson YMCA. Some of the challenges that we have here include uh, stiff joints with a lot of our uh, clients that work out here. and. Uh, what we, our goal, at least with this class, is to, you know, keep them moving. And uh, we have a gentleman in a wheelchair who is able to walk to and from his wheelchair now that he definitely wasn't able to do before. 
um, even the small things as far as getting onto the bikes. Uh, when we first started this class, uh, I had to help every single person in here um, get onto and off of the bikes, and now they can all pretty much do it on their own, and that's just in a short six week span. Yeah, definitely uh, it, it is a terrible thing to have to deal with, but if you keep moving, you can limit the symptoms as much as possible. Hi, my name is Drew Lowe. I'm a student of physical therapy. I've been a licensed Zumba instructor since uh, 2014. Zumba is great for the Parkinson's population because there's rhythm, there's movement, and all of that stuff is very beneficial for people's, people diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Um, there's research showing rhythm, even metronomes, music, uh, help them walk because a lot of times they have trouble walking. And I've seen uh, music help many Parkinson's patients be able to walk without tripping on themselves or getting that freezing gait. So I think it's very beneficial for them. The Y is a great place for the uh, cycling or spinning, they call it. And then they have the exercise classes are designed for people with movement disorders or they're recovering from stroke or, you know, what, whatever. Um, and they try to tailor them to the needs of the, of the people in the class. They have different levels, of course, of uh, intensity of the disease. Um, so they work real well with them and they have trained physical therapists in there, as well as the wonderful trainers that they have here at the Y. I'm faithful to come when they have the exercise class. I have to make myself sometime because I don't want to do it. But the last time I saw my doctor, he told me that the medicine he has now, my attitude and my exercise is what's keeping me going so good. And I would recommend the exercise to anybody that has Parkinson's. I was having trouble at work and I kept falling down. And then they sent me to the specialist in Greenville. And she, right away, she diagnosed me with Parkinson's and she got me the medicine and everything, and I kept falling down. I kept falling down backwards at the grocery store, in the kitchen mostly, and uh, well, she uh, changed my medicine. I was in the house all the time. I didn't do anything. The only time I went out was to the doctor or the grocery store. And uh, then I says, well, I want to start exercising, whatever. So I came to the Y. And I've been coming for like maybe three months or so, and I'm doing the exercise. They showed me how to do all the machines in the exercise room, and I've been doing uh, the class two times a week. And I've been doing it for a while, and I come like three times a week. They have different things for us. And right now, I am doing so well, so well. A lot of times, I could walk now, I can't remember the last time I fell. In 2012, I had two strokes and a lot of TAAs. I ended up heart blind, paralyzed on the right side, and I couldn't talk. I recuperated from all that and as best I could. And then I was slowly getting worse, and the doctors were having a hard time figuring it out. Finally, they decided I might have Parkinson's-like symptoms. So they sent me to a neurologist, and they said, I don't have Parkinson's. But I have the symptoms, and they started giving me the carbo low dose of the carbolidopa. And then things kept getting worse and worse and worse, and then my hand was curved like this at one point, and I could barely go do it on the left side. My toes were curling. And they referred me to a, another specialist who works with people who have major problems, and he looked at me and he said, you definitely have Parkinson's. They sent me for the test and they confirmed that I do have Parkinson's. And he did not have another stroke causing the symptoms. And they, of my carbolidopa, they basically tripled the carbolidopa that they were giving me at the other places and everything finally calmed down. I could think straighter again. My brain came back and my doctor's been, you can see the shake in my hand. The doctor's giving me Botox. When I saw him, my hand was like this. It's giving me Botox to help straighten the arm out. My arm, I couldn't get deodorant under my arm, and now I could lift my arm up. The toes on both my feet were curled like this, and now they're, they're almost straight.
come into the Y, have self, look at the blood flow. Got everything lined up. I can, I can move my arm. My hand is no longer painful anymore. I can, with the exercises we're doing at the Y, stretch, it's all about stretching and big movements. I've um, got my arms straight up, my toes are better, my equilibrium is better, and my wife says my brain's back. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of the so, things I noticed, I mean, he used to fall uh, three times a week. He couldn't, could barely walk to the car before, so the exercise program that they have here has really made a big difference because he is walking and he's exercising and moving and uh, definitely improved.